how to describe the systems methodologies, but with case studies. Um, if you're doing the assignment for Unit 23, then you definitely need to talk about the case studies, such as the UK's National Programme for IT, the Health Service Programme for IT, NHS Programme, Edinburgh Trams, and maybe Dutch Railways, London Underground. You can pick one or two of these, but the main one really I want to talk about is this one. And it will help you get a merit and a distinction. Don't just explain what the methodologies are. Don't just explain what Agile Waterfall Spiral is, uh, SSADM, Extreme Programming, Scrum. Provide concrete real world examples to back it up. So, for example, Agile worked well because it worked well in this case study, but it didn't work. But uh, Waterfall didn't work well because it didn't work well in this case study. Got to say why one theory works better than the other, perhaps. Um, if you can't find everything you need, so you're not always going to find case studies that say this was definitely done in Agile Waterfall. You might need to infer it, maybe give your opinion, but just back it up with the case study that you found. By doing it like this, it shows you fully understand all the theory. You know what the well, you know what the different types of methodologies are and, and you can apply logical reasoning to it. So I suggest as you're doing the listening to this, create a table like this where you've got the different examples. Um, I'm going to go through this one in detail now. You say what things went wrong, why was it not delivered on time? What could be done better? What type of methodology was used or you think was used and which one do you think might have been better? So what was the National Programme for IT? It was a programme introduced by Tony Blair in 1997 when anything was possible, when they came to power and everyone was excited. He wanted, he met with Bill Gates and he discussed digitising the NHS patient record. So for example, if you were sick, and you were in another part of the country, they could get your GP records from where you live. Um, it meant the healthcare records were available at the point of need. Here's an example, you're a diabetic, go in a hospital in a coma. You can't tell about that person unless you, but you can if you look up their digital records. Right, well, it sounds like a good idea, doesn't it? But why did it fail? Well, I'm going to try and explain this in terms of why they didn't follow the Agile Manifesto. So. Working software is delivered frequently within weeks rather than months. But the problem with this project was it was done on a massive scale, a waterfall approach. It cost $13 billion. It went over many, many years. They didn't really get the requirements. They didn't really talk to the people who were going to use the system and they delivered the whole thing in one big go and it failed because it just wasn't quite what people really needed or, and they didn't understand the customer's needs. Untried and untested. So again, working software is a primary measure of success. So this piece of software didn't really work. The people who are going to use it were not consulted. Customer satisfaction by early and continuous delivery of valuable software. So you need to make sure that you continually deliver at least little prototypes of the software so you can figure out whether or not it's really what they want. And if you do things like that, then you can welcome changing requirements, even in late development. Things are not fixed. You then don't go, well, this is what we made. You need to use it. So look at the Agile Manifesto. And try and relate the case study such as this to that and say why it succeeded, bearing in mind those manifesto ideas. Another reason why it failed, having the right people on the board and asking customers if they want it. For example, Agile Manifesto says close daily cooperation between business people and developers. It also says projects are built around motivated individuals who should be trusted. So the problem here was that the clinicians, people are going to use it, managers, um, and the techies and the people, the, the you know, the sick people, the citizens were not sat in the same room together. They were not in close daily cooperation. 
it was the techies and the politicians well, not really the techies, the politicians and the managers of the project who were saying this is what they need, but they didn't sit in the same room. They didn't test it out. So they had no idea really what was needed in the business. You need to have the right people communicating and be aligned. Again, close daily cooperation. And um, also projects are built around motivated individuals who should be trusted. So this was one of the problems. Now, um, if you look at this video that I'll link down below, um, this is a great account of someone who actually worked on this project as a manager and he discusses all the things that went wrong. And some of the things he says that are related to this Agile manifesto are that projects are built around motivated individuals who just should be trusted. Is that um, you need to be able to trust the team of people that you're working with. Um, clever people don't like to be led. You know, give them a problem and they will find a solution if they're smart enough. Um, so, for example, clinicians, doctors who are going to use this system, well, they never really necessarily they said there was a problem here. But then they have this national program for IT coming along and so then telling them, well, this is how you should do things. You should digitize these records. You should, uh, you know, instead of writing it down, you should record everything in this system. We're trying to lead these clever people. We're trying to tell them what how they should do their be job better. And they just didn't agree and they didn't use the system. What would have been better would be to have gone and spoken to them and found out what the problems there were and how they thought best it could be solved. So they weren't trusting the clinicians um, or developers, but they were leading them, the managers, the project managers were leading them. Um, and clever people don't like to be led. And they were not motivated for this project. So it led to a, this, the disaster that it was. Um, so also why it failed, expensive project managers Regularly, the team reflects on how to become more effective and adjust accordingly. Some of these project managers are getting paid £2,000 a day. They wanted the project to go on for as long as possible, and a lot of people became quite rich from it. They were recruited outside of the NHS, so they didn't really have an understanding or a huge concern with the success. They were just more interested in, well, the longer this goes on, the more money I'm going to get paid. And if the team reflected, on how it could become more efficient effect and effective if they followed these agile manifesto principles if they'd had daily meetings perhaps and and discussed all the things were going well and the things were not going so well and which team members were good and which teams were not contributing equally they may have discovered issues like this Government ministers don't stay for very long. The average length of stay for a health government minister is 21 months. Since the start of this project and the end, they went through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about 14 different ministers, from Fowler to Moore to Clark to Milliburn, Johnson, Hunt, and Hancock. So when there's a lot of change at the top because of political ends, new government, not wanting the project to fail. Very and varying levels of enthusiasm. Maybe the Labour Party wanted it more than the Conservatives, so they put it on a back burner and they defunded it. The project was not built around motivated individuals who should be trusted. It was built around political ends. Too many developers. Again, this is about regularly reflecting on how the team can become more efficient or effective and adjust accordingly. One of the examples that um, Joe McDonald talks about in this video, which I recommend you watch and there's a link below, is that when he was sent to India because of his su perceived success on this project, he discovered there were 2,000 developers. Uh, even the Lyft attendant had on the system. So it's a mistake to think that more developers will mean that you will have a more successful project. That's not the case. It's not necessarily more likely to succeed. 
The team was not reflecting on how it be could become more effective and efficient. They were not co-located. They were not sitting in the same place. They did not have daily face-to-face uh, -face meetings. They were all separated out, working on things that they were sent from another country. They were not motivated. And that's why it failed. If you have to hire a press officer to deal with bad software, you've gone wrong. So to relate this to the Agile Manifesto, continuous attention to, to, to technical excellence and good design. So if the software is not of high quality, you've got a problem. And if you're having to get a press officer to tell people that actually it's OK when it really isn't, you've definitely got a problem. Um, he, Joe McDonald, wrote a report on this saying what the state of the project, it was ignored. He tried to blow the whistle, he got sacked for it because it was too political to stop the project. It would have made certain people look, look bad and embarrass them. So they had to go on flogging this thing, even when people were saying, no, 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 it's not good. It's not even working. So this principle was completely ignored. There was no attention to technical excellence at, or good design. Um, also, there's the naughty user syndrome, which Joe talks about. Um, basically, instead of saying the software is wrong, you're blaming the user for not using it properly. Well, that's ridiculous. Um, again, there's no continuous attention to technical excellence and good design. And they were hiring press officers to tell people that the software really wasn't as bad as it actually was. If you made good software in the first place, if you got the stakeholders involved, you sat down with the clinicians and the, and the patients, you worked out what was going well, what was going wrong and how it could be improved. Um, everyone saw a point in it. Developers were motivated by it. The managers had a stake in it because they came from the NHS or um, uh, then everyone would have been motivated. Uh, the attention to detail would have been good and technically people would have produced something that worked well for everyone. Successful projects are like gardening. So working software is delivered frequently, weeks rather than months. It's the so working software is the primary success of measure, the primary measure of success. So it would be years before the working software was just dumped onto clinicians before they got any feedback. Um, so they completely ignored the fact that it was that principle. It didn't work. Um, it, the software wasn't delivered frequently, years. So if you don't get the people who are going to use this system involved, as in this slide here, if you if you don't start small and grow it and test it on a small user base, if you don't work from the bottom up clinically led, if you don't get early feedback and figure out whether or not you're really going to get a return on your investment, you're never really going to work out whether or not something you've got is any good. So another humorous thing Joe talks about in the video says if you can't be in the same pub in an hour your project's too big so fine you're going to work remotely fine that's the way things are in the world now post-covid but developers in India and all around the world so there was no chance of them at getting to the pub in an hour you need to be sat in the same room with users developers and and testers and the users being testers and people giving requirements and feedback and if you are, then you follow the agile principles, close daily cooperation between business people and developers, face to face conversation. It's the best form of communication, co-location and, and regularly reflecting because you're sat together and talking about things on how you become more effective and adjust your team management accordingly. So if you were writing this up as an essay, um, you might want to just pause the video here and read this example of how to discuss in terms of systems methodology. This example. So here, basically, what I'm saying is. I'm describing what this what the national IT program was 
And then I'm going on to say, if they chose an appropriate methodology like Agile and followed those principles, got feedback early from key stakeholders, they would have been more successful. Um, it would have allowed them to understand the complicated requirements. It's a, it's a big, huge, technically complicated project. Um, but they appeared to choose, it's not stated, but you can assume some things that they chose a more spiral or waterfall approach, meaning that long iterations before any software was delivered or tested, and then them realizing it really didn't even work and it wasn't even what anybody wanted. So. This is a strong answer for how you can talk about methodology in with an example. And again, you might want to uh, read this as there's, this is more information in which I'm gaining, I'm, I'm reiterating everything I've just said in the slides about close daily cooperation. I'm quoting the Agile Manifesto, um, and then I'm kind of interweaving it into my explanation of of, of how Agile was not followed. For example, the teams were too far away, they were too big, too expensive, people were not assessing how to make the team more efficient and having close daily cooperations and talking face to face. So it was just delivered in one big bang waterfall. As we know, waterfall has its place, but only when maybe for simple projects where the requirements are well understood, and that wasn't the case here. So here are some other examples um, which you can read in your own time. I'd pause the video here and read why the Dutch Railways uh, decided to use an agile scrum approach instead of waterfall. And here's another example of how Edinburgh City Council's 2001 tramline extension was delayed, delayed, delayed because of political motivation and lack of funding and my summary in that last point is about how waterfall it seemed like it was done in a waterfall approach wasn't the best approach maybe because there was a certain amount of risk to it you know you're carrying passengers a spiral approach might have been used and um, here's my thoughts on how perhaps the London Underground was delivered successfully using Waterfall, although this is a bit of a weak example. I'm sure you can go out there and find your own examples of failed government projects. It, the world is littered with them. And um, you can look at how they were managed, relate them to the Agile Manifesto and say whether or not you thought they worked and what things they could have done better if they'd followed them. And just to summarize this then, so what is the difference between a successful project and one that is not? Uh, this is also something you could use to summarize it if you're gonna write about this, or if you are thinking about setting up your own project. Um, clinically led or customer led. Uh, make it simple, get the users to tell you what they want, Clever people don't like to be led, they like to be given problems that they can solve. Um, make it cheaper. If you deliver it in small iterations, you don't have to spend $13 billion before you've got something. Do it in smaller iterations, a couple of weeks for each sprint, you know, a, a, a final prototype in six months. Make sure everyone's co-located, sat in the same room. Um, not in separate rooms across the globe where no one was really talking and nobody really uh, even cared because that is they were not motivated. If you want to have a disastrous project, um, make it complex and deliver it in a waterfall way where you think you understand the requirements, but they're so complex you don't. Don't involve users. Um, make it very, very expensive. Deliver it in a big bang approach um have your developers on, on different continents have too many of them and never even never even communicating so in in and this is related specifically to the national program for it but you could base you could apply some of these points a lot of these points to any project on how to make it successful or not and here at the end is 
some of the references that I've used to do with the examples. And uh, I'll put these uh, links below 